Well, Allison, when we think of aviation pioneers, especially here in San Diego, the name that quickly comes to mind is Charles Lindbergh. But there were a lot of daring young people anxious to open up the airways of the world, and one of them was also closely associated with San Diego. His name was Douglas Corrigan. On the morning of July 17th, 1938, Doug Corrigan was preparing for a flight from New York to Long Beach. His single-engine Curtis Robin was a used plane, already nine years old. What nobody knew, except maybe Douglas Corrigan, was that he was headed for a place in history. Instead of landing in Long Beach, 28 hours after takeoff, Corrigan landed in Dublin, Ireland, swearing to everyone who would listen that he had become confused, had simply flown the wrong way. The 11th person to fly across the Atlantic, Wrong Way Corrigan came home to America a national hero. It's 50 years later, but the man and his plane are still running strong. The national hero has come out of relative seclusion to be honored at this weekend's Hawthorne Air Fair near Los Angeles. Here we are, the first time it's been running for almost 50 years, and it's just idling now. We'll get it turned up again a little bit in a minute. I gotta look in here and see if I got oil pressure there. There's still excitement in his eyes, back at the stick of the plane that carried him into the history books. The Robin has just been reassembled after sitting in Corrigan's Santa Ana garage for nearly 50 years. Volunteers with the Southern California Historical Aviation Foundation did the rebuilding job, but its foundation president, Leo Day, who may have performed a minor miracle. With some help from friends, he's the one who talked a reclusive, cantankerous Corrigan into taking part in this weekend's Hawthorne Air Show. I work on the airfare that we have here at Hawthorne. This year we're honoring pioneers and dreamers, and of course he falls very well into that bracket, so through a very good friend of mine, uh, we approached him, and uh, he seemed to be kind of interested. So worked along with him and uh, told him what we were trying to do. Uh, and all of a sudden, he's, out for the first time in 50 years. That's when the job of reassembling the old Curtis Robin began. When airplane builders like Ed Clark had to start figuring out how to get the fragile antique back together again. After some trial and error, they had it up and running. I tell you, most all the people were helping on it were all airplane people, and. We were very careful because the fabric is very, very bad on it. If you push it with your finger, you can go through it. Of course, Douglas Corrigan, he thinks he wants to fly this thing, but it's just a little bit too bad to fly. Even though the Robin may not fly this weekend, old Wrong Way Corrigan will likely taxi it around the Hawthorne airfield for spectators, and then, of course, share the story of how he allegedly made his famous mistake. You've got to remember that for years, Douglas Corrigan had been asking for government permission to make a transatlantic flight and that he had been told repeatedly uh, that he and his clunker of an airplane would never be allowed. The federal official in charge finally told Corrigan to just stop asking. He wasn't mad, he was pleasant about it, but the last thing he said was, get lost. <laughs> well, two years later, I got lost. So I did just what the government told me to do. <laughs> it's not my fault. So the mystery remains. Did he do it by accident, or did he go the wrong way on purpose? One man waited 10 years to ask for a second time for the true story of Douglas Wrongway Corrigan. So I told him the story, and when I got through, he said, that's the same story you told me 10 years ago. And I said, yeah, that's the only story I know. And he said, and you've told it so many times, you probably believe it yourself by now. And I do. Well, maybe he does, and maybe he doesn't. But you can bet at this weekend's Hawthorne Air Fair, officials will be keeping a close eye on Wrong Way Corrigan. History proves he's capable of turning an airplane taxi exercise into a cross-country flight. I changed from the water-cooled V8 90-horsepower engine to this air-cooled... Now that Corrigan's Curtis Robin is back together again, the people at the Aviation Foundation in Hawthorne hope souvenir pictures will help generate a few extra dollars to supplement Corrigan's fixed income. Later on, some of them say they think the plane will end up where a lot of aviation history began. Probably in the long run, I have a feeling he probably would like to see the airplane go to San Diego. He's kind of hinted at sometime. And uh, so maybe one day it'll be down there. Yeah, the boss can. He's just got to have the size Lindbergh and Wright and all the others, yeah. The man and the legend continue to please the curious, admiring crowds. 
This weekend, no doubt, a lot of people will try to discover the truth about Wrong Way Corrigan. But the last thing he said was, get lost. Let me just ask you, would this face tell a story that wasn't absolutely true? <laughs> Two years later, I got home. <laughs> it's not my fault. It seems that only Wrong Way Corrigan will ever know for sure. Well, if you would like to get up and meet Wrong Way Corrigan, the air show runs through Sunday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. The Hawthorne Airport is just off the 405 freeway where Crenshaw Boulevard crosses 120th Street.